Hey guys, it's Zach here with Aldeck, and today I'm going to briefly explain uh, how to write a Verilog test bench. So Verilog is a hardware description language. Uh, it's widely used for logic design and simulation. And uh, for anybody who's familiar with C++, it's the syntax of Verilog is very similar. Uh, now you can use the Verilog uh, language to uh, model your designs behaviorally, structurally, or using a data flow model. Um, so being able to do that gives you a high level of abstraction, which can help speed up design process uh, if you're able to describe how the circuit would be, uh, behave as opposed to the basic components of the circuit. So the program structure goes as the following. When you have your design modules or your test modules, uh, you start out with the module name, you identify the module. Um, and then your designs, you'd use, you would identify your input, your output, or in-out ports of your module. Uh, then you move to your declarations, which would be your registers, any functions and tasks, and then your constructs of your design, which could be any assignment blocks. And when you're uh, creating your test modules, the structure is a little bit different. You uh, still have your module name, but then you will uh, design your data types, which would you declare your inputs as registers or outputs as wires. So anything from your design module that's input or output, you would be putting in your data types. Uh, the test module would you be calling the module that you're testing. Any design module is what you'll call in the test module. And then you would actually provide your stimulus at the very end of your test module. And two things you should be familiar with when uh, writing test modules are initial blocks and always blocks. And initial blocks are going to initialize values of signals. It will run once uh, when providing the stimulus, and you can use it to select specific stimulus to certain signals. If you want like specific signals to receive signals at specific times, initial blocks are a good place to do that. And in always blocks, it will run uh, these loops of your stimulus until the end of simulation, um, and it stimulates these constant signals. So always blocks are good for things like clocks and counters. So there we have kind of a basic idea of how a uh, test bench should be written. Let's go ahead and take a look at one. So here I've got a pretty simple combinational circuit open. Uh, it's got three inputs, A, B, and C, and an output Y. And then it's got a few various core logic elements combining all of those uh, signals together. And I've also written a corresponding test bench uh, for that test design. And um, as you can see, I've instantiated my instantiated the module, the test module, um, in my test bench with module test underscore tb, and I've bookended it within module. Next, I declared the data types inside of my test module, and any inputs in my test design, such as a, b, and c, I've declared as registers inside of my test bench, and my output y I've declared as a wire. And then the next step would be to instantiate your test design inside of the test bench. And the best way to go about doing that is if you come down to your libraries viewer, viewer you can open up the test library, and then you can right click on that module and copy the VHDL instantiation and copy the, or copy the Verilog instantiation. And I, it's actually what I've done here. And then you can uh, label your uh, test design anything that you like. I've labeled mine test circuit. After that, you're, um, when it comes to combinational, you would want to create an initial block, and then this is where all of your stimulus for those signals will go. And it's going to be bookended between bit, begin and end. And inside of this uh, begin and end statement, you can assign each uh, input or output different values, and uh, you can also use this notation of hashtag with uh, times uh, a certain number and that'll delay it by 20 time units based on whatever simulation settings you have set up. So I've done that here and then the best way to end your uh, test bench is by using the dollar sign finish um, and then that will indicate every time that you've run simulation that your uh, simulation has ended. So now that we've taken a look at how this test bench was designed we can go ahead and run our simulation. So what I'd like to do is compile our test bench, and then we can go ahead and initialize simulation. And as you can see, my signals have come up over here in my objects viewer. And if I open up uh, my waveform, I can select all these signals and drag them onto our waveform. And now I can actually just go ahead and hit run all and run my simulation. 
So as you can see, I've run my simulation and it brought me back into my test bench and it indicates that we have finished our simulation. And then we go back in here and you can see that each waveform has been stimulated and you can go from here and verify that the circuit is working properly. So now that we've taken a look at a combinational circuit, we can move on to a sequential circuit and test bench. So what I've got here is a pretty simple sequential design. It's a 4-bit up counter, but it is actually written in VHDL. However, I did write the test bench for this design in Verilog. So one of the nice things about Riviera Pro is that it does allow you to uh, write your test bench in whatever language, no matter what language your design was written in. So the counter has uh, two inputs, a clock and a clear, and four outputs, which would be Q0 through Q3. So if we go ahead and move and look at our test bench design, we can see that the module is instantiated using counter uh, underscore TB and bookended with in module. And I've declared the two inputs as uh, registers and that the four outputs have been declared as wires. I was then able to uh, instantiate the counter design inside of my Verilog test bench using uh, the library viewer and I right click on the design and then you can actually copy a Verilog instantiation of the VHDL design. So after you paste that into your Verilog uh, test bench you can rename it and label it. I've labeled mine test counter. Next you want to provide stimulus to um, the simulation and the signals that need to be stimulated. So the initial block here allows you to initialize some signals and values for these signals. So the clock has been initialized at zero and then the clear was initialized at one. And then after 100 time units of delay, the clear goes to low. And then after 5,000 units of time delay, the simulation finishes. However, simultaneously, I have an always block, uh, which is running a clock, which um, on 20 t time units delay, every 20 time units, it uh, inverts the clock from either zero to one or from one to zero. And that's the uh, test bench. So we can actually go ahead and, and run simulation on this test bench. So what we want to do uh, is compile our designs. And then we can actually come down to our library viewer here again and go to the counter TB and initialize simulation on that. And as you can see over here uh, in our objects viewer, we have the signals that have populated and we can actually select all of them and drag them onto our waveform viewer. And now since I have a design that finishes after um, 5,100 time delays, um, we can actually just hit run all for our simulation. So if we go ahead and hit run all, you can see it's brought us to this finish here and we can go actually look at our simulation and we can see that it has run and you can see the results of that simulation here. The tool used in this video was Riviera Pro, which is provided by Aldec. Riviera Pro is a high-performance simulation and debugging tool. It provides the simulation power needed to develop highly complex designs and debugging tools to ensure they're working correctly. Riviera Pro has debugging features such as showing design data flow, memory visualization, X-Trace, as well as full UVM support and toolbox. It also has mixed language support for seamless compilation and simulation of your designs. Riviera's assertion and coverage tools make designing easier and decreases debugging time. For questions about the software, contact Aldec. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.